Would you like to hear a sermon, or would you rather I just tell you a story? Story, story of a sermon. Okay, a I'll, sermon just, story. I'll just tell you a story. All right. So, um, this is a ghost story. Is that okay? It's a ghost story. It's not... Better. I promise you, you won't get scared. Oh. It's, it's not a scary ghost story, but it is a ghost story. Okay, And it's a true story, too. So, uh, once upon a time, there was uh, a little girl named Sharon. It's not Sharon Paces. Okay. Her name's actually Sharon Lund. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> she's grown up with her mom and her dad. And uh, some, she had some really bad things happen to her. Uh, from the age of three until she was 12, she was constantly abused by another member of her, a male member of her family. I won't go into the details, but the, the grown-ups know what I'm talking about. So whenever these, thing, these bad things would happen to her, an angel came and visited her. The angel's name was Laura. And the angel would take her out of her body and they'd go to the zoo, or they'd go to the park, or they'd go play with dolls so that she didn't have to experience these bad things. Isn't that an amazing story? Yeah. So um, she told her, uh, she couldn't tell her mom about what this guy was doing to her because he said, if you tell anybody, I will kill your mommy. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I'm going to kill your mommy. So she couldn't tell her mom. But she did tell her mom about the angel, the angel Laura. And the mom did the best thing that she could do, and that is she believed her daughter. You know, sometimes when kids uh, have these kind of experiences and they tell an adult, the adult says, oh, that's just your imagination. That didn't really happen. You know what I'm talking about? But that's not what her mom said. Her mom was a very spiritual person. And her mom said, oh, that's great that you have this uh, friend that you play with that's an angel named Laura. And actually, you can play with her anytime you want, and I think it's great, and maybe you'll even learn from her. Isn't that, isn't that awesome that the, yeah. the mom really supported her daughter and, and affirmed her experience? So because of that, uh, Sharon felt that it was okay to have this relationship with this angel. So when Sharon grew up, she got married. And she married and had a, a baby girl named Janine. Janine, they're, they're, both of these people are still alive, by the way. And um, she, she had a husband who uh, was really mean to her. You know, uh, ver it's called verbal abuse. He would call her stupid and say, you know, you'll never amount to anything. You can't do anything right. You get the picture? And so this really damaged uh, her self-esteem. And finally, she divorced him after six months. But the experience, this bad experience she, she had when she was a little girl, and these bad experiences that she had with her husband caused her to be, get anorexia. You know what anorexia is? Have you ever heard of that? Anorexia? Yeah, yeah it's where... Um, uh, they, people throw up, right? They'll eat, eat and eat on purpose. They'll eat and then they throw up on purpose. So then they get really skinny. Right. Okay, so she had this anorexia. And, um, and she got to the point where she couldn't take care of her daughter anymore. So she sent her daughter to go live in Hawaii with her grandparents. Because she knew that the grandparents would take good care of her. But then she became depressed. And she got so depressed, she decided that she wanted to die. So she took some pills. She ate a whole bottle of pills. But they didn't, they just made her sick. And she threw up and, you know, it didn't happen. So she was angry at herself because she couldn't even do that right. So finally, but finally she tried again to die. You know, she's going to do something really bad to herself. But before she did. Just before she was going to take her life, she did a really smart thing. You know what she did? Pastor Angel. Pastor Angel. Prayed? She prayed. Oh. <laughs> she prayed. 
<laughs> she prayed. She remembered God. And she said to God, she said, God, please forgive me for what I'm about to do to myself, but I just can't keep living with this tremendous pain. So if there's anything that you want to say to me, please tell me right now. And that's it. Very simple prayer. But immediately, the whole room filled with light. It's really bright light. And she could feel the presence of God in the room. And she said she felt love. This overwhelming, wow. And she started to cry because she felt so loved. And she heard a voice speak to her and say, it's not your time to die. Call up the, on the telephone and go to a hospital. Go, go to a hospital and you'll get better. And then you're going to become famous. You're going to travel around the world. You're going to write books. And you're going to help a lot of people. And so she didn't kill herself. She called the, the, on the phone, you know, it was an emergency number, 911. And the ambulance came and took her to the hospital, and she got better. She was in the hospital for a month. And then when she came out, she became famous, and she traveled all around the world teaching people about spirituality and teaching uh, people about uh, AIDS, you know, AIDS prevention and can helping people who had cancer. She did all these great things, this person who almost killed herself. Isn't that a great story? <clears throat> now... If the story ended there, that would all already be a pretty amazing story, right? But it gets better. But first it gets worse, okay? And this is how it gets worse. One day she's watching TV, and the TV show was about uh, AIDS. Do you guys know what AIDS is? Yeah. It's like COVID. It's like COVID. And this is when it first came. When it first came, everybody that got it died. They died, but they died a very, it was a very slow, long death, okay, because they didn't have any treatment for it at that time. Now they do, they have these cocktail of drugs that people can take, and it keeps them alive. It doesn't cure them, but it keeps them alive. So anyway, she's watching this TV show about AIDS with uh, Dan Rather, and it's, a, it's called AIDS Hits Home, and they were interviewing a man, and this man said, I have AIDS, and... Uh, she looked at the guy on the, on the TV, and guess who it was? It was her ex-husband. Her ex-husband is on the TV saying that he had AIDS. So she called him up after the show and said, I just saw you on the TV saying you had AIDS. What's going on? He says, no, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. And he denied it. But she said, I better get tested. She went to the doctor and she tested, and guess what? She had this disease. Now that was, in those days, I'm telling you, this was in the 1980s, that was a death sentence. But she made a bit of an important choice. She said, I decided to let the AIDS virus empower me. What? That's an amazing way to look at things, right? Well, it empowered her by opening doors for her to speak everywhere. She was able to speak even more places, especially to women, about how important it is to get tested because your husband might be homosexual and you don't even know it, and he's out getting AIDS and giving it to you without telling you, which is what happened to her. So that's what happened. She actually struck, spoke even more. But this AIDS disease is really, really bad disease and it wears your body down over time, over time, over time. And she, and she developed something called pneumonia, this really bad kind of pneumonia and another um, disorder in her body so that she couldn't uh, keep the food down. She would eat and then she would throw up. And, she could, and so she got to the point where she weighed 85 pounds, okay, just like skinny. And uh, she said, sometimes I would have a fever of 104 degrees, and then five minutes later, I'd be shivering like cold as ice. So it's very, it's a very horrible disease. Her daughter, remember I told you she had her, a daughter? Went to. Yeah, who we went to Hawaii. Now, her daughter came and lived with her. She was only 12 years old, and her daughter became her caregiver. So 
And Sharon said she didn't think that was fair. A 12-year-old girl had to deal with this. But her daughter would take care of her, and her daughter would say that sometimes she didn't know if her mom was still going to be alive in the morning because she was so sick. Finally, she had to go into the hospital. And she was in the hospital, and she's hooked up to all these tubes and just... Like I said, she's down to 85 pounds. And the doctor said she's going to die this weekend. So, so they, the doctor got in touch with the family and said, if you want to say goodbye to your you know, Sharon, you better come this week to the hospital because we don't think she's going to make it through the, through the weekend. So Janine, of course, was, came to visit her. And when, she, when, he, when Janine saw her and what shape she was in, she said, can I climb into bed with you and I'll just hold you? And because they had seen many of their friends die of AIDS, they, uh, so they knew about hospice care. And a lot of times in hospice, a nurse will get into bed with the patient and hold them while they die so that they don't feel alone. So she's, she held her mom uh, the, the whole night and uh, her mom said she felt tear, uh, her shoulder getting wet and she realized that her daughter's tears were going getting on her. It's a beautiful, beautiful story about how much her daughter loved the mother. Now, the daughter had to, uh, went, just left for just like 15 minutes to just go take a shower. And when she left the room, Sharon died. Okay, man, I told you it's a ghost story, right? So this is where Sharon becomes a ghost. So she died. She literally, she just, her heart stopped beating and she died. And she saw, she felt her, her, soul, her soul come out of her body and it went up like from the ceiling. She could look down and see, she could see her body laying in the bed. And she knew that that was her and that she had died. And then she went through this tunnel of light. She went through this tunnel of light at the end of it. And she came and... Uh, she uh, came to the, to, the, to the end of the light, and uh, God was there. She didn't see God, but she felt God, and she heard God. And God spoke to her and said this, said, My child, unlike the last time, this time you can stay with me if you want. You can stay here in the spirit world, or you can go back to the earth. It's your, it's your decision. And um, he showed her her whole life. Right? You know about this? It's called a life review. She saw all of her life. And she saw all the people that she had helped. Right? She was working with cancer patients and AIDS patients and teaching people and all of this stuff. And she heard um, the voice of voice say, Look at all of these people that you helped in your, in your life. So she was very happy about that. Then God said to her, before you decide if you want to stay in your here in heaven or go back to earth, I want to show you one last thing, okay? She says, oh, okay. Then she had this amazing experience where she relived all of her experiences with her daughter, Janine. She, she went back to when she got pregnant, and she could feel the baby, uh, you know, kicking. She remembers singing songs to her daughter even before she was born. She remembered when her daughter was born, and she gave her her first bath. And there's this, like, very special smell you know, of a newborn baby when you give it its first bath. Oh, you know, she's reliving all of these wonderful, beautiful experiences with her daughter. And then as her daughter grew up and singing songs with her and dressing her and taking care of her, you get the picture, right? And then, all, you know, and then the, the suffering when she had AIDS and her daughter taking care of her and how close they became, right? So all the way, she lived a whole life up until she's 20 years old, which is how old she was at that time. And so after she had that experience, God came back and said, okay, what is your decision? And in her heart, she wanted to stay in the spirit world. She wanted to stay in heaven. She wanted to stay with God because it's so beautiful there. But her heart said, oh, I can't leave my daughter. She's only 20. Not yet. Not yet. And so she told God, I have to go back because of my daughter. And immediately, guess what happened? She woke up back in the hospital room, back inside of her body. 
She, but she's still hooked up to all these, you know, intravenous tubes and, and you know what I'm saying, right? And she still weighs 85 pounds. Then the miracle happened. I'm going to read it to you in her own words, okay? Because it's, it's so amazing. Hold on, i got to look it up. The, the, the whole story is in this book. This is a book I wrote called Experiences with God. So hold on a minute. Uh, Sharon on page 26. Okay, so remember, she's back in her hospital bed, and but she's still sick. But then she says, a strange sensation started to happen inside my body. For the next hour, my body glowed with love and light. I could see bursts of light going into every cell, sparkling and vibrating with energy. The healing power of infinite spirit was restoring me cell by cell. The sensation felt like effervescent bubbles. It was as if I were being newly created with life, strength, and energy. The intense surge in vibrant life force running through me was so strong, I knew before long I would be back in my earthly home healthy. So, this, it, this is not possible scientifically, but she's cured of AIDS. There's no AIDS in the body anymore. The whole thing was just, it's called a spontaneous remission. It just was wiped out in one hour through the power of God. And she's now, if you saw her today, you wouldn't believe that she ever was sick. Do you think that that woman almost died of AIDS? Yeah. No. She's just vibrant and full of life and beautiful. What a story. So that's my ghost story. Um, so wh why did I tell you that ghost story? Because it's a God story. It's a God story. Because you know, in uh, Family Pledge number five says, Our family, the owner of Chung El Gut, pledges to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world and the physical world as subject and object partners by centering on true love. So I've taken it upon myself to be the spirit world guy, so to, to br bring this about, the unification of the spirit world and the physical world. The only way we can do that is if we know about it, we understand it. So I'm going to be sharing lots of stories about the spirit world so we can understand it and make better unity with it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. God bless you. I bless you, leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you.